So, I'm gonna start it here. I'm just, I'm just gonna go out and farm a little bit. Starting off, I'll show you a little trick with this, with the sprinting. Also, a lot of people still don't know this, but I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you about. Like normally, when you sprint, you uh, like this is how you run normally without sprinting. And then you hold in shift and you sprint and you sprint faster, right? But when you play this game for a long time, holding in shift for sprinting, or when you stop and you have to press shift and S to sprint, uh, it gets very tedious, especially when you like, let's say you farm trees and you want to sprint between each, between each tree. So what you want to do is that while you hold in your sprint key, you also simultaneously press control. And that way, all you need to do is tap the sprint key once, and you're or, and you're automatically sprinting. So now I'm sprinting without holding in the shift key, which is the sprint key. I'm just sprinting. All I need to do is tap once, and I sprint between each tree like this. So it's a neat little trick. If you don't know this, the, it, it's actually worth knowing because it gets really irritating when you when you go from like just one tree to another tree to another tree and you have you want to sprint between anyway uh, let me see I need to be able to organ I'm my monitor is very disorganized now so see if we can um, well I'll just I'll just um, normally when I come with suggestions and I when I when I have a lot of thoughts about a game where it needs to go what's happening with the game what needs to be improved normally I put that in a video that is very very thought out and very well planned normally I take a lot of time with it but today I'm just gonna wing it so um, normally you want to say certain things in a certain chronological order in order for things to make sense you want to start with you want to start with one thing that leads up to the next thing but here I'm if things get a little disorganized in this this stream I'm, I'm just gonna just gonna wing it and I'm just gonna talk a little bit just straight out of my heart here okay so first thing first the whole concept the whole thing within the crypto space, within crypto gaming, where as of now, you grind and you grind and you grind for the sake of grinding, for the sake of leveling up so you can grind something else, for the sake of leveling up so you can grind a higher tier of the same thing. This concept in crypto gaming has worked throughout 2021 mainly because you're earning cryptocurrency and there's a lot of cryptocurrency enthusiasts out there and because games that are designed this way have no competition now the last part of that the no competition part is about to change i follow a lot of cryptocurrency game projects i, I don't want to i don't want to say any names because i don't want to be disrespectful and kind of like chill and promote other games when I'm making an immersive uh, video and an immersive stream because that's that's just bad manners in my opinion but there's a lot coming and all the games that as of now has survived and thrived on a very simple concept of just farming for the sake of farming those games are gonna end up having some serious competition within the let's just say within 2022 and beyond it's it, there, there's some serious competition coming where you actually have proper games that are going to be really really fun to play for the sake of playing the game and on top of that you also have the in-game in uh, in-game currency of whatever cryptocurrency whatever whatever coin whatever token is almost exclusively going to be tokens now Immersus is one of those games that I believe has an enormous potential. But I think that the devs need to start focusing more on actually playable content 
rather soon than to keep adding more and more stuff that we can farm right we recently had the bug net with the bugs it's all cool and good and all that we're gonna have the level uh four or the tier four trees soon and that's it's all cool i mean i i just upgraded my axe to a steel axe i have steel pickaxe and steel axe um i just i just wanted to have it but the whole thing of grinding for the sake of grinding it's going to end it's 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 not it's go, it's not gonna last. It's not gonna have long long longevity. We need in-game functionality for everything we grind. Everything we grind needs to have in-game functionality in a in a way that is fun to play. Now the good thing about immersus from that I picked up from talking to I Make Stupid Games, which is one of the devs, probably the lead dev, I, I, as far as I understand it, is that this game, when it comes to the combat, is going to have both PvP and PvE. PvP has already been implemented, but it was very frustrating for the people that... Like, it, it, it was basically just griefing, and that, that's what Dan said in, during the stream. So they had to remove it. It, it, it just became toxic. And that's the thing about PvP, is that PvP isn't good because it's PvP. PvP is only good if it's implemented correctly. And it needs to be promoted correctly so that the kind of people that want PvP finds PvP. But right now, the, the people that found, or the people that are grinding in Immerses are not your average PvP player. Those people have yet to find this game. People that are looking for PvP, they're not going to be, wow, look at the Immersus, yeah, I'm going to go in there and grind for like a month or two months before I can PvP. That's that's not how PvP players work. Trust me, I know a lot of PvP players. I am one of those kill on sight kind of players from H1Z1 and Rust. I know I know how these people think, right? So in, in games like, in games where you have in-game uh, in -game currency, in-game items, uh, where you have a value... In stuff that you loot well the value of the stuff that you loot only has value if they if they actually have a reason a, a fun in-game implementation right now let let I, I wanna go to some uh, let's just jump over to some suggestions with in-game implementations for the stuff that we actually grind let's, let's just start from the beginning with what you grind. The first thing you can start grinding is hemp, right? And with hemp you can ma make strings. Now strings in itself, that that resource string, even hemp actually, but let's focus on string first. String can be used in a multiple amount of PvE and PvP combat uh, weapons, for example. You can String can be required to make a bow, and there can be a variety of different bows that you can make. String can be used for crossbows, for slingshots, for bolas. Uh, you can even make it like a, you can even make a net if you if you want if you have a lot of string. Let's say I, I don't know if you know about the story. This uh, very famous or well, among historians, famous gladiator in the Roman Empire. He he was very successful with. A net. He had a net and a spear, so he threw his net over his opponent, killed him with a spear, right? Things like that. Like the implementations of the stuff that we are grinding are more or less endless. More or less endless. There's so much we can do. Rocks, for example, we get rocks all the time. People just get irritated, right? Oh, I got another rock. Rocks, you can make a basic club for as a weapon, as a, as a tier one weapon, right? You need a uh, tier one plank. A string and a rock and you have a club right like a Stone Age uh, kind of weapon right that could be a, a, a like the first weapon you can you can create all you need is a rusty axe a rusty pickaxe and some hemp and you can create that weapon right when it comes to wood and metal I don't even know if there's any point talking about it because the, there's so much like spears and swords and arrows and if you want to go towards military weapons which uh, i make stupid games talked about well then you have all the kind of like all the kind of firearms that you can think of right smgs ak 
you know, all the sniper rifles, shotguns, assault rifles, pistols, revolvers. You know, there's no point talking about it. You all know what I mean. And of course, when it comes to the difference between steel and uh, iron and steel, of course, that's a higher tier weapon, right? Some of the basic, simple weapons you can make with iron. If you want to have a good weapon, you need steel. And all of this can be implemented with wood as well. If you want to have a good spear, then you need the higher tier wood. You want to have a good bow, you need the higher tier. You, you need the spruce, right? And maybe a couple of strings. And then when it comes to arrows, you can start with bronze. There's, there's nothing wrong with bronze weapons. There's nothing wrong with a bronze mace, but that's like tier 2 or something. And then you go to iron and steel. So far, it's simple, right? The next thing that's a little bit more complicated, it's, it's not really more complicated, it's just like the next thing is how do we implement, how do we actually make value out of silver and gold? Because silver and gold is not that valuable in making weapons. That doesn't make any sense in weapons, right? Silver and gold is mainly for jewelry. But here's the thing about Immersus. Immersus is also very, very, um, or the, the developers of Immersus is very, very heavily influenced by fantasy games. And when it comes to fantasy games, you now have the, the combat in fantasy games. You have spells and abilities, right? And those abilities, normally they are on cooldown. They can be different versions of strong and weak and all, all these things. And that's when jewelry comes in, where you have enchanted jewelry or you need a piece of jewelry or some magical jewelry in order for these spells to be more damaging or to have a co uh, shorter cooldown or to even cast a certain spell you might need a gold ring or a gold necklace or some some such right there's nothing new about this skyrim was full of it i played as a i played as a mage in skyrim and i had all the jewelries enchanted that a, a character could could have and uh, i enjoyed casting spells in 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 Skyrim, so you know, enchanting um, jewelries for the sake of combat. Possibilities are endless. But the the combat, the the interesting combat has to be implemented in a game. And I think, from a personal point of view, I think ne this needs to take priority over more farmable items. You know, sure we sure. Adding a level four tree, fine. Of course, I want that because I have a steel pick. I have the steel axe, right? Of course, I want that. I'm just talking about myself. But if I'm talking about this game for the sake of the game development, for the sake of the game, my what's good for me isn't isn't good for the game just because it because I want it. So I want to focus on talking about what I believe is good for the game, and it might not necessarily be what I want. Me, I'm a PvP player. PVE for me is very secondary. But I think that PvE is easier to implement without without causing frustration, without causing without causing problems. I think adding PvP is much more complicated and much more controversial in this kind of a game than PvE is. So I want to focus on some of my ideas that's just like as I'm running around here farming, all of these ideas. So, uh, you ever thought of playing Halo? No, not really. There are Halo games coming in the crypto space, and I'll be looking at those games. But uh, right now, I'm giving up on the regular games. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, with the with the failures of Battlefield, Battlefield Five, and Battlefield 2042, I can't see myself playing the 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 uh, the has been games. I I can't see myself playing the the games of the past. There's a new era coming in gaming, and it's all about blockchain gaming. It's all about, you know, building up your your character, building up an in-game economy in-game that is actually um, that's actually useful outside of the game. And the one of the reasons why I believe in those games is not because it's partly well it's a big part that I'm a crypto enthusiast and I want to make money playing a game of course but the thing about it, this concept has a much bigger chance of having a longevity than these you buy the game for 80 bucks or 100 bucks 
and then you play it, you get like three or four or five DLCs, and then the game developers, they, 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 they don't care about the game anymore because they can't make any more money on that game, and they start developing a new game. And I'm really sick of that. I'd rather a game just kept evolving and evolving and evolving, getting improved, getting bigger maps, getting more maps, getting more content, rather than ha like what we see with Battlefield. We saw Battlefield 1, which was a great game, being... S the devs stopped working on Battlefield 1 in like somewhere mid-2017 or maybe earlier, maybe 2017 somewhere. And then they started working on Battlefield 5, which was a complete fiasco. And then it's Battlefield 2042, which is even worse, when it would have been so much better for the gaming community, when, when they have something good, which is Battlefield 1, if they just kept expanding on that and made it better and more and gave us more maps, more weapons, but, but there's no incentive for DICE to do that. There's no incentive for EA to give us more content in Battlefield 1, because Battlefield 1 is not a game that... EA doesn't want us to play Battlefield 1. EA doesn't want us to play Battlefield 5. They, they don't want us to play Battlefield 2042. They want us to buy these games. Whether we play the games or, buy or not is completely irrelevant when it comes to EA's economy. It's buying the games that matters. And this creates a problematic scenario when it comes to the incentive for game developers to create good games that has longevity. There is no, there is no such incentive. There's no reason for devs to make a game. If you, if you work on DICE, owned by EA, there is no incentive for you to make a game that is worth playing for five years. No incentive whatsoever. You're supposed to, to be bored with a game after a year and a half so that you will buy the next game. With a game like Immersus, you have a game idea and a gameplay that is designed so that the success of the, the success of this game is mainly or partly defined by how much the longevity of this game is going like th yeah how long the game is going to last the, the the longevity of a game like immerses is going to be one of the deciding uh metrics that you can see in order to see whether or not this is a successful game so that's why i'm i'm off the whole the whole battlefield and call of duty concept it's just it's just terrible it's just terrible. I can't this game to World of Warcraft because it is the same concept. Farming for his upgrade into the armor. Yeah. So, I mean, we know this is coming. They've told us this is coming. They even had PvP, but it, they had to remove it because of the frustration. So we know it's coming, right? And that's a good thing. But when it comes to, like, uh, when it comes to what I believe we should... What I would hope they would start with, let's let's just go with that. Let's, let's let's just take it from like, where do we go from here? Like, we start with what, what we have. You look at the immersions now. This is what we have. This is what the game looks like. This is the resources we farm. These are the tools we have at our disposal to farm these resources. And you look at what can we do with this? Now, already I already started explaining that a little bit uh, with some of my ideas. So. And if you had unlimited amount of time, if you had a a uh, a developer team consistent of ten thousand developers that all have five hundred years of gameplay experience each, and they are all geniuses, then you can come up with all kinds of stuff. But in reality, we have to try to focus. We have to prioritize, because the people making these games, they are people just like you and me. They have their lives, they have their families, they have their limited amount of time, and they have to make priorities. And this is where we, the gamers, comes in, in order to provide feedback. What, where should we go from now? We have what we have. Where do we go from now to make this game more immersive? Where do we go from now to make this game more interesting? So, in order to, in order to cut a few corners after I've been talking about uh, the low tier uh, 
weapons, the, the possibilities of low tier weapons, right? Bows, spears, arrows, um, maces, swords, knives, daggers, all that stuff. That can be done, that, that should be part of the game, in my opinion. That should be, for the most part, low tier, but not necessarily low tier either. But I, I wanna I wanna start with one idea that's been it's just been on my mind this like for several days and I just can't stop it. It's because I'm out here, right? I'm out here. This is if you don't know what I'm what I'm mining here, this is silver, right? So I know I got sidetracked there with the Halo and all that. So silver in the world of fantasy has especially one in-game usage, and that is in order to counter or kill werewolves. That's the only, like, established fantasy use of silver. I mean, there, there are countless of other things, of course, like jewelry is jewelry and, and, and spells are spells, but if you've ever watched any fantasy or uh, supernatural um, TV series, movies, read any books or whatever, we all know silver is the counter to werewolves. So there we just basically have something for free. So I'd like to elaborate on that thought. Uh, and I think mining here in the silver field is probably the best way to do it, right? So my initial idea was this. You have, you start with like a dungeon, right? It could be a dungeon that is somewhat similar to, um, oh, hello. You have, a, you have a dungeon similar to the mine, right? Like the gold mine. Uh, did I go in there? Yeah, I was in there, right? Let's say you have that, right? And in there you have, in this case, werewolves. And the only way that you can enter this mine, like it, it shouldn't be something that you can go in like 15 times a day or anything. It should be limited in how many times you can raid this 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 dungeon full of full of dangerous werewolves. You have to have silver weapons or silver rings or jewelry for spells and maybe silver armor but silver needs to be a necessary resource in order to go in there and fight these werewolves right and then the rewards for killing these werewolves should of course be drops from from killing these werewolves like whether it's a tooth or a pelt or I don't know whatever whatever you can think of maybe the claws or the hand or something you, you can, there, there's countless of, of things you can think of but the main goal with this dungeon in my opinion uh, was that you have to have the crafting and the tools that we already that we already worked so hard for that we already invested in they still have to have an in-game use even in this PVE a combat scenario so the goal of going into this ma uh, into this dungeon fighting off all these werewolves it is at, at the end of this um I'll look at this at the very end of this dungeon there should be like some uh some well pretty like you you probably have to fight a boss or something and then you have to um in order to benefit from it or to take to get the rewards you have to actually mine a, an ore that that you can't access unless you fight the, the the werewolves and get through the dungeon but you also need a certain tool depending on the level of that dungeon in order to actually claim that reward by mining it so the mining part of it should be the way you claim the rewards for finishing this this uh this dungeon that that is one of my that is one of the things that I would like to see implemented early on, and I, I hope I hope I'm not like confusing people with this. Slingshot, yeah. Okay, so you're into slingshots, uh, Blue. All right. Yeah, there, there's. There's all these kinds of things, right? I mean, just just rocks and and rope, bolas and slingshots. Well, slingshots will need wood also. And if you get a really good one, you get an iron one. Or well, you can start with bronze, going up iron and steel. So.
that's that's like because and and the reason why I started thinking about silver per se is because silver doesn't yet have any kind of usage at all even for the sake of farming like I have the gold I have the gold bar I have never found any gold this is gold right let me get some gold 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 no I have yet to find gold ore I have silver I have three silver ore that's all I've been able to gather but I have the gold blueprint <laughs> Uh, that's weird. Orange Jesus is laughing at me. But the use cases for gold and silver, it's probably going to be like if it's in-game, in-game uh, functionality, or if it's in-game fun functionality that has anything to do with combat, which I'm hoping for. That's the only thing I can think about right now is the combat scenario. And I, I have some crafting, I have some crafting ideas also, but I'll, I'll take that later. But when it comes to combat, silver and gold, the only implementation they have is, is in a fantasy scenario with like spells as jewelry, as enchantments on jewelry, or doesn't have to be enchantments, but like, yeah, the jewelry functionality. But of course, silver has that extra thing, right, where based on, based on fantasy stories, we have the counter to werewolves. So, snakeshot, one wood and string leather pouch to make. Then you need stones to, yeah. What you, you know, what you'd write there, uh, suggestions like that, you know, you should, you should write them down in a document or something and organize your thoughts and have them saved as suggestions when these suggestions makes uh, when when the devs needs those suggestions this right here right now might not be the, the best time we're in Christmas people are you know people are celebrating there with their family and all that stuff and we know that the devs are working on this they just came out with this point system or the XP system and they're working on you know adding uh, uh, they're working on the avatar um, apparently the reason why we don't have legs and other stuff is because this was uh, originally um, a VR you, you were supposed to play it with a VR headset or, uh, and that's how VR uh, characters look I, I haven't played VR in a long time but I, I remember uh, VR characters only have an upper body and no arms just the hands and stuff like that so that our characters they look like VR uh, VR characters so they're working on that so the suggestions that I'm coming out with now might be more relevant in like a month or two or three, I don't even know. BF1 is calling your name. I know, Snake. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm sorry. I'm sorry you guys are disappointed that I left this game, but, uh, you know, um, there are a few surprises when it comes to BF coming your ways. There, there are a few more BF1 surprises coming. So, yeah. Um, a lot of, uh, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of avenues opened for a game like Immersus, there's just tons of possibilities, and I just hope that the dev team implements and prioritizes this in the correct way. Oh, and another thing that that I heard from Dan, uh, he, he he touched on it a little bit during his stream, but it was quite um, he wasn't too he wasn't too uh, well, he he was a bit hesitant about it, and that is the deterioration of your tools and your weapons. Um, he was worried that people would be. Well, he, he per, partly he was worried about the how that would actually be implemented, where how you make have to make a transaction to repair your tools and all that stuff. And he didn't seem too thrilled about that idea. But I have to say, 
personally, I think that the deterioration or uh, things requiring repairs and maintenance, things requiring resources for maintenance, I think that is absolutely crucial. Because what we have right now, and this is uh, right now we have one enormous problem with immersives that is undeniable. And that is that we have a massive amount of inflation in terms of in, in terms of the value of the resources because there is no other value there's no other in-game value of tools other than to sell it and to upgrade and to get other tools you have no in-game usage for it other than farm so you're farming for the sake of farming hoping that somebody's going to buy the stuff you farmed for the sake of farming even more there's no other there's no other incent incentive to farm other than to sell and upgrade for the sake of farming more and this needs to what happens with this is that not only does it create gameplay that isn't in any way interesting to most gamers but it also creates inflation in the assets the assets are being infl inflated as we speak. Every time you pick up something, we, we create inflation. And the only counter to that inflation is more players. Is this an axe murder sim or something? It's uh, for now. This is not a weapon, but uh, maybe our tools can be weapons in the in the long term. Also, how you doing, Christopher? Yeah, sorry, I haven't seen you guys in a long time, but I'm. Uh, I'm focusing on other games than the Battlefield series for some time now. I'll, you know, I'll mix it up, guys. Don't, don't give up on the Battlefield content. And I, I'll, I'll put out some more Battlefield One videos. I promise, I will. But I, I, I see my even, even at, for me, it's like 5 a.m. almost. It's 4:44 a.m. for me. Even at this time, I would have at least 50 or 60 viewers playing Battlefield. So. My viewers are quite cons uh, conservative when it comes to changing games and what kind of gameplay we want. So, starting off with with um, PVE aspects, that, that some some PVE aspects, and also when it comes to dungeons, I need to go back to that a little bit. When it comes to dungeons. Obviously, we need to have different tiers for dungeons, and for obvious reasons, you need to, like, in order to get into a high tier dungeon, you have to have high tier uh, equipment. But you also need to have a certain incentive for lower tier dungeons to actually have a use, and even though it would make sense that you can enter a low tier dungeon with a high tier set of equipment there should be a reason there, sh there, there should be some kind of in-game mechanic that hinders you or that demotivates you from using let's say a tier 4 weapon in a tier 1 dungeon and it's not that hard to implement or the idea is not that hard so one of the ways that I thought about it would be that if you go into a lower tier dungeon, right? Some of the assets that you get from from fighting in a lower tier dungeon are things that let's say again you're fighting a mythical creature, right? You're fighting a what are we fighting? Let's say you're fighting uh, orcs, right? You th you're fighting level 2 orcs. And the valuable loot you get from level 2 orcs are their jewelry, maybe their weapons, maybe their uh, maybe some some parts of their of their body, tooth, uh, horns, whatever, right? Whatever whatever fits with orcs, right? However, if you are using a high tier weapon or high tier gear in a lower tier dungeon, then you're gonna deal so much damage to these lower tier enemies that you're going to destroy whatever possibility of loot that you would otherwise gather. So if a low tier orc is wearing a let's say a tier 2 necklace 
If you kill that orc with a tier 4 weapon, you destroy the necklace because you're you're dealing too much damage and even the even the loot gets destroyed. That way, you only have incentive to use let's say bronze weapons in a tier 2 dungeon because otherwise you get no rewards, right? At the same time, we have these people that only want to combat. They and if the combat scenario in this game gets good enough and interesting enough, then we're going to attract a lot of those people that are not even interested in farming. But that's a good thing. We we want those people into the game as well. So how do we find a balance there? Well, the balance is uh, again as a combat character, you can you can fight your way through all these these um, enemies. And, and pick up the loot that they drop and whatever. But in order to get the last part of loot, the most valuable part of loot, the most valuable resource in that dungeon, where you can only enter like maybe once a day or something, or whenever you have the right assets, you can enter it. But in order to pick up that last asset, then you need high enough tier tools to access it. Like, let's say it's a magical golden ore that will give you one uh, patch of gold or one ore of magical gold but in order to get that gold after you've been running through all this, th these enemies uh, killed all these enemies and running through this dungeon in order to actually mine that ore which is why you're in that m dungeon in the first place you need to have a high enough tier pickaxe right so the PvP players, if they only want to do PvP, they have to either... I mean, if they don't want to do the grinding, they can just buy the pickaxe. And that way we have incentive to grind and make another pickaxe. So you need to have this incentive, right? And deterioration of weapons and armor, maybe not tools, but weapons and armor at least. And refilling... Um, refilling magic with potions and stuff it's needed for the sake of of uh, of the assets to not be inflated otherwise the, the prices of anything would just be it'd be be nothing soon you'll buy a, a, a steel bar for two wax why not there's so many steel bars nobody wants to buy them because everybody has them already and that's that's what's happening with the game right now because we have no prob we have no proper incentive to get any resources for any other re reason than to mine more resources. Merry late Christmas, Christopher. Finally got some time out of the... Oh, you should try this game and just farm, man. This is free to play, Chris. You can just download it. Immersus.io And join the Discord and you can start mining for, for free. Here's the link. So, thoughts, guys, ideas, what do you guys think? Where do we need to go with this game? Aside from all of you guys praying to RNGs to give me a spruce plank BP. And silver. Now you, you look at this game and you compare this game to all these. Well, for me, it's H1Z1, it's Rust, it's Skyrim, and if you want to go more into the military side of things, you have Stalker and uh, Fallout. Of course, Fallout and Skyrim goes together, made by the same company, same engine. I 
when you use this for the resources other than getting resources yeah that's that's what needs to be done <coughs> and we're talking about gaming here so it needs to be a fun game right the whole the whole concept of of in game of f the whole concept of farming resources there's nothing new but you always farm resources for the sake of of usage for the sake of uh, mostly for the sake of combat you need resources to get that gun you need that gun to to defeat these enemies right and that needs that aspect of the game needs to be interesting because if it's interesting then people will want to play the game people will want to get more in-game assets and it will go from there farming for the sake of farming I'll say it again, farming for the sake of farming, that's a 2021 feature that worked in 2025, uh, 2021, but we have 2022 around the corner, and there is a lot of competition coming in the gaming market with NFT gaming, play to earn gaming, play and earn gaming, that is a lot coming, a lot. So, uh, yeah should probably uh, I'd like to see what uh, the devs have in in mind for these for these things trader that gives you a mission maybe there's a trader that gives you a mission but he needs some item yeah yeah like you have to buy you have to buy the mission somehow yeah makes perfect sense and um oh yeah i was thinking about another thing about crafting yeah i almost forgot for crafting one of the things that the game probably should implement is that you should have the certain craftable things needs to not only cost resources I, 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 I remember Dan said something about that during the stream that they're gonna implement the cost for crafting that makes perfect sense I would go as far as to say some items would need maybe like a furnace in order to be able to craft you actually need a furnace to craft and you need that furnace to be you know burning some wood to be hot enough to craft whatever in-game item and then now you have the usage of these in-game items and they can be you know using them like that that's a that's just the assets being burnt to be sent to a burn address or however burning works I've heard some different I don't really know the normally I think burning is you just send them to an to a burn address that nobody has access to um, but yeah making a furnace with those rocks and I don't know what else do you need like clay maybe to make a furnace wood for um, for fuel things like that right but we need we need a deflationary we need an in-game deflationary uh, use case of these assets otherwise they're not gonna be worth anything nothing is gonna be worth anything if only thing you can do with your resources is, is mine or farm more resources they're gonna be useless in the long run so there needs to be an in-game function a, a burning a burn functionality if you if you're familiar with the crypto term of burning coin burning or nft burning if you're basically the the item gets destroyed it's it's in every game items gets destroyed items gets lost that's how they get more valuable because they get more scarce hey Andrew 
and I can understand that some people are against this. Oh, I don't want my axe to deteriorate. I don't want my. I don't want to waste my. Re well, you think of it this way: you're, you're you're creating nothing but inflation. Your axe that today is worth 150 wax or 200 wax, it's not going to be worth that tomorrow or the next day. It's just going to drop in price because more axes are going to be out on the market, and you can't really do anything with it than to create more axes in the long run. So. Yeah. Now, when it comes to actual in-game proposals for for combat scenarios, I have so many ideas. I don't even know where to begin. Maybe I'll have to. Maybe we'll take one step at a time. We'll we'll start with this one uh, game idea video, or I'm, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna upload this video, or I'm gonna upload this stream on my secondary channel. See if it's still recording. Yes, it is. So this is gonna go on my secondary channel, and you can check it out there if you if you wanna recap something or make a comment or something. And um, well, I just wanted to share this about what I think about immerses and where it's going. I have high hopes for this game. I believe that we're onto something. We're we're at the embryo stage of something really really big. And, uh, yeah, I hope Immersus will live and thrive in the upcoming years. So, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I will see you guys later.